Claude Lorraine will rival Poussin in terms of fame. His paintings tend to lack a narrative. They're kind of a cross between the very lyrical paintings of Giorgione, for example, and the pure landscapes of Coupe. He also is known for carefully modulating light, in fact creating incredibly realistic light, especially when you look at the trees, for example. You get the sense of some of the leaves being translucent, allowing the light through, whereas in other areas the tree is thicker, some of the leaves, of course, are not getting light at all. And he's known for his use of what's called a Claudian glass. This would be a black mirror or a piece of black glass or obsidian. And what you do is you shine it over your shoulder at the scene and you paint what you see. What it tends to do is it knocks down the values, simplifies the image, and allows you to get a sense and really map the tones and values that will be used in the image. What's going to be particularly dark, what's a little bit lighter. It gives you a greater sense of detail, especially when used in landscape, although it can be used in any form. and is today sometimes used to study paintings. So an artist might use it to look at their painting and see if they have the right balance of, for example, very light tones, mid tones, and dark tones. Now he will create landscape with cattle and peasants. Here the artist has designed a well-defined foreground, middle ground, and background with subtle modulations blending the three. His use of atmospheric and linear perspective reinforce each other to create a sense of deep space. And he spends time studying the nuances of light as well as light in the atmosphere. So he will modulate light through tiny gradations, tiny differences with specks of color. Look at the trees. You can imagine him putting just a tiny speck of color for the individual leaves, whereas he works in larger groups when he gets into these more massive areas. He also will be one of the first in landscape painting to frame in his images with trees. Now, we famously know that Bob Ross does this, one of the best known artists of our generation, but he's getting the idea from Lorraine. Lorraine is also known for infusing nature with human emotion. In this case, what you're seeing is nature from a pastoral setting. So let's start tearing this apart a little. We have our foreground, which really leads up to this point here. We have our middle ground, everything from the foreground to this point, and then here we have the background with the mountains. Now, by using atmospheric perspective very, very carefully, he gives us a sense of blending the three, so we don't really divide them as easily as we would in some other paintings. The sky, you'll notice instead of the deep and dramatic skies that we've seen from other artists, this is very, very subtle, yet arguably more realistic. The trees frame in our scene and make it easier for us to get into, easier for us to understand. And by calling it landscape with cattle and peasants, well, he's basically removing the narrative. There is no story here. Here are the peasants, here's the cattle, here's the landscape. And that's going to be important because he wants to get at this sort of lyrical pastoral air. He wants something that's going to be calming, something that we feel invited into. And at a deep evolutionary level, we do. Because from an evolutionary perspective, we're looking for fairly green pastures, we're looking for trees, uh, typically small trees with branches or forks near the base so that we could jump into them, our, our ancient ancestors could. We're looking for water sources and a way to get there. And you get this sense, Poussin, or sorry, Lorraine is using light to give us a sense of a path that would lead us down eventually to the water. At a very deep biological level, this is a very attractive painting to us. And it goes back to our very earliest ancestors and what they might have seen on the African savanna, something that kind of holds over to this day. And if you think this, is, this idea is really out there, it's actually an idea set forth by Dennis Dutton, an author and someone who studies the evolution of aesthetics or really the study of beauty.